So you ever um, wake up in the middle of the night and have no idea where you are? This happened to me a while back. Woke up in the middle of the night, kind of had a stomach ache, really hot and sticky, uh, mosquitoes all over the place, have no idea where I, I was, and I was scared to death. I mean, I was frightened. And I, and I don't usually get scared, I worry. I'm kind of a worry wart. Um, I uh, get startled, but I was like scaredy cat scared. And I don't get scared, and that's probably a sign of low intelligence that I'm never scared <laughs> on stuff like, that I should be scared on. And um, finally re realized that I was in Sierra Leone, West Africa. I was in a hut in a village four miles outside of Freetown, uh, four hours outside of Freetown, scared to death. See, we'd been asked to come to Sierra Leone because a group of business guys, some, my, my uh, roommate up here at Oklahoma State actually, uh, decided that we could figure out how to manually drill water wells as a business uh, for the people in the developing countries. So we were trying it out in Sierra Leone for the first time. Um, the water crisis in, Amer in the world, there's a billion people that don't have access to clean water. A billion people, the bottom billion, don't have access to clean water. There's a child that dies every 21 seconds from lack of clean water. That's 5,000 kids a day every single day, 365 days a year. So we were asked to see if we could help this. We took our manual drilling rigs into this uh, country. Uh, we started drilling, uh, and lo and behold, we hit pristine clean water, 45 feet down. Uh, we brought some solar pumps with us. Uh, we put the solar pumps in, uh, turned on the switch, and it didn't work. <sighs> so. I start troubleshooting the thing, and this is actually my second solar pump I'd ever installed in my life. I sell them at our pump company. I sell them by the thousands. And so I was the expert, because I'd put one in a few years before in, in southern China. Uh, so I'm troubleshooting this thing. I, I, I can't make it work. I go to bed. I wake up scared. I wake up the next morning. I troubleshoot again, which I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I waited for the sun to come up, said a quick prayer pushed the button, and water started coming out. So it was, I guess it was my genius of fixing this thing. And so I gave them some instructions on how to run a solar pump in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they gave me some chickens, which uh, typically happens. And we started heading our way back the four and a half hours back to Freetown so we could catch our uh, 1 a.m. flight. Um, as it started quieting down in the, in the vehicle, uh, the chickens are clucking as we go over uh, bumps on our, and doing other things on our backpacks. And um, I, I started asking, why was I so scared? How come I was so frightened? And I came to the conclusion that this was one of the first times in my life that what I was doing really mattered. This wasn't a blown deadline. This wasn't a missed sale. This was life and death. They had a child in this village die the month before we got there. So this really, really mattered. So back up a few years before we went to Sierra Leone, I'm growing our, our pump company, Pumps of Oklahoma, and we're, re we're experiencing really rapid growth. And so I'm trying to manage this growth. So at lunchtime, I just get away. And I, I try to eat a real healthy meal, so I usually go get a chili cheese dog and some tater tots. <laughs> I sit under a tree, and I just kind of veg. Well, this particular instance, I look up ahead of me, and lo and behold, uh, there's a, a, wrecking, a wrecking ball ahead of me. Uh, it is amazing. I get to watch a building being demolished old school with a wrecking ball. <laughs> is this cool or what? I'm munching on my tater tots. I'm cheering for the wrecking ball dude. I'm like, hit it over there. He's hitting it, and dust is coming off. Pretty soon, he starts punching big holes in this thing. And I'm looking at the building, the structure, and... I don't even remember where this was exactly. I, um, I think that's from the partying or something I did up here when I was up here in the 70s and, and early 80s. Anyway, um, and I'll deny that. Oh, I can. I'm on TV. Um, so um, I'm, I'm watching this thing, right, and I look up on the top of the, of the uh, building, and there's a, a couple of names, like Joe and Nancy. I again, I don't remember what it was. And... You know, Joe's starting to shake a little bit, and Nancy's lost her A, and all of a sudden, the building comes down, 
And before I'm done with my tater tots, there's a, a, a forklift, a, a front end loader pulling off this building and hauling Joe and Nancy to the, to the garbage dump, to the landfill. And I'm starting to ask myself, what am I doing? If this is what happens to Joe and Nancy, because I can, I can imagine you know, the groundbreaking ceremony with the golden shovel and the, the ribbon cutting ceremony with the giant scissors. And this is how they end up. I wonder what they'd think of this right now. Uh, ending up in the, in the landfill. So I start asking myself, why am I doing this? Why am I burning a hole in my stomach? And it wasn't from the chili dog, but why am I burning a hole in my stomach, working so hard? What's this for? And I, I, I brought this all out, and I'm like, well, you know, I have to make a living. I have to pay my mortgage. Um, you know, I have, to, I, I have to have a new car. I have to have a new house. I got to have braces for the kids. You know, I'd, I'd love to have a, a nicer vacation. Um, and I figured out everything that I was doing was only for my comfort and convenience. I was working only to make my life a little more comfortable and a little more convenient. And I thought, you know, this is, in looking at Joe and Nancy being hauled off to the landfill, I was getting kind of glum over this deal. And so I'm like, well, what, what lasts? What's going to matter? And I determined at that point that the only thing that's really going to transcend my existence um, is the influence I get to have into the next generation. That's what Oklahoma State's all about, having influence into the next generation. My dad taught me to work hard and be honest and be generous. I taught my kids that, and my kids do work hard, and they're honest, and they're generous, and I know they'll teach their children that, that very same thing. Um, and so my dad is transcending... Uh, his existence. He's, he's gone now. How do you know at the end of the day what you did in life mattered? How do you know at the end of the day what you did in life made a difference? So we decided to have a, the brilliant idea of taking this, I, of this, this manual drilling method into a nonprofit entity. We, we formed Water 4 in 2008 to go and train people how to drill water wells on our own. We're not the United Nations, so we can't just be giving thousands and thousands of dollars every time somebody needs a well, but maybe we could uh, professionalize this manual drilling. And sure enough, we started going to every country that it would invite us in. Uh, the, the cost to drill these wells is a tenth of the cost of a normal uh, machine dug well. These Machine dug wells are $10,000 to $15,000 each. Our wells are $1,000 to $1,500 each. And we're putting the locals to work, drilling their own wells. Well, after going to all these countries and saying yes to every project that came about, um, a big organization came knocking on our door called World Vision. And World Vision at the time was a $2.7 billion organization. They had 44,000 employees. And they came and said, hey, we'd like to partner with you. And I'm like, okay, sure, yeah, there's six of us. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we're not even your sticky note budget. Well, you know, I don't think we're your coffee budget for one of your offices. What does partnership mean? Well, we, we think what you're doing is fantastic. We want to make it bigger. So let's do a pilot project. So in their mind, a pilot project is a 7,000-well project. So, of course, there's six of us. I said, yeah, sure, that sounds like a good thing. Let's do 7,000 well project. It ends up being the largest freshwater drilling project in the world right here out of Oklahoma, right roots out of Oklahoma State University. So how are we going to get money for this? Well, World Vision says, of course, you need to raise the money for this. Um, and I said, okay, well, yeah, there's six of us. We should be able to raise $20 million. Shouldn't be a problem. So we said yes and went ahead and did it. Um, well, we look up, and all of a sudden, we have a manufacturing facility in Ghana. We have a manufacturing, manufacturing facility in Ethiopia. And out of these facilities, we're able to, we're able to drill, when we're at full strength, around 2,500 wells per year. Just to give you a frame of reference, in one of these countries, you might get 500 wells right now on a good year. We're going to be at ramping up because we're training these locals to do this as their own business. We're going to be able to drill 2,500 wells a year. We want to build 40 of these facilities. We've built two. We want to build 40. 
And if you do the math, one of these drill teams can drill around 40 wells per year. So you got the 40 wells per year, you got the 20, 2,500 uh, uh, per facility. Um, this turns out to be a million wells that we're going to be able to drill in about 10 years after our last facility is up and running full blast. So we thought, why not drill a million wells? I think we can do that, sure. A million wells basically fixes Africa. And this all came, I didn't want to do this. I wanted to go play golf. I was on a tennis team up here. I wanted to play tennis. I didn't want to travel around to these places, but you know what? It came by, th by asking why. I want to challenge us to ask why. Why are you doing what you're doing? We're real big in America on what do you do and how do you do it? Um, I don't think we spend enough time on the why. When I finally figured out why I was doing this, oh my goodness, the, the what I do and how I do it became on steroids because I had something I was looking for. I think it's really important for us to ask those questions, to deliberately spend time on figuring out why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you going to school? Why are you have this career path? Is it just about making a few bucks? Because at the end of the day, I keep watching Joe and Nancy come toppling down uh, off of that building and being hauled to the landfill. Make sure at the end of the day, what you did in your career mattered. Make sure at the end of the day, what you did in your life made a difference. Thank you.